This is John Colo with OKRaw.com. Today we have another exciting episode for you, and I have a special guest on the show today. Uh, this is my friend, Dr. Rick Dina, DC. I've known Rick, man, since like the late 1990s. 90, 98, I think. 98, yeah, so 98. like a long time. Anyways, um, he's been into a raw vegan diet since 1987, so this is uh, 2017. This is his 30-year anniversary uh, on a raw vegan diet. Predominantly, or predominantly raw, <laughs> all vegan, <laughs> all the time. <laughs> all right. So, anyways, this guy's a wealth of knowledge. Um, he, him, and his wife, uh, Dr. Karen Dina DC, uh, do do uh, many different things, including raw food educational classes that we'll talk about later in the episode. But the reason for Dr. Rick today is because you know he has been predominantly raw, but all vegan during this time. He eats more cooked foods than I do. And you know, although we may differ on some opinions on some things, we also would probably agree with a lot of things that raw food is not always superior uh, to cooked foods. And I know this comes up a lot and there's a lot of raw food dogma that, you know, I want to make this video with Dr. Rick today to cut through some of the dogma out there. And so what we did is we came up with like 10 questions that we're gonna actually, um, I'm gonna ask Dr. Rick and then I'm gonna answer and give my opinions on if you should eat something raw or cooked depending on what it is, and in some instances we actually have raw versus a raw food, you know, maybe something, maybe you're gonna eat higher fat or if it's gonna eat more fruit instead. So this is just gonna be kind of a fun uh, kind of a thing so that you guys could learn about maybe some of our opinions on eating uh, a different choice in under different circumstances. And this may help you guys out uh, in your life. Any yeah. comments before we start, Dr. Rick? <clears throat> yeah, there was a thing on the Woodstock Fruit Festival deal that said something about that raw food was always superior to cooked food. Mm. And I thought, no way. Absolutely not. So we're going to cover some of those reasons and some of those things now. Yeah, I mean, I, don't, I would also agree that raw food is not always there's superior Generally, food. but Generally, no right. way always. No, no way always. No way. All right, so let's get to the first one. All right. right. So... Uh, say, Dr. Rick, you would have actually go to a raw food, raw gourmet food restaurant. So, like maybe in LA, All Lock is one of the famous ones down there. Or you'd go to like place. some kind of like super salad place that would have you'd have a uh, salad, steamed vegetables, maybe a baked potato. Um, which one would you rather eat at, and why? I guess it depends which specific thing on the menu yeah. I would pick. <laughs> but generally speaking, the gourmet places. The food's really high in fat, it's salty, it's oily, it's spicy, the food's really concentrated. And I know from experience, when I eat that food, which is like really, really rare, but it, it mostly from in the past, it's kind of started in the mid to late 90s when raw gourmet started coming in. And I'm so thankful that I had a, just about at that point, just about a 10 year history with raw food, fruit and vegetable based, because when I eat that gourmet raw stuff, I do not feel good. I mean, if I normally feel like this, I mean, it brings me way, yeah. way down. Whereas if I go to a place, uh, even if it's not organic, if I eat a, a big plate of salad and some steamed vegetables and a couple of potatoes or so, then I go from here to maybe here the next day. Mm. And that is way above where I feel eating raw gourmet food. So that Without a doubt, I would eat cooked food that's clean, simple, healthy over gourmet, dense, nasty raw food. <laughs> it's just, it's just you do it a few times, and and the the difference, at least in my personal opinion, based on how I feel, is is dramatic. It tells the whole story. Mm. Yeah, so I mean, I would disagree with Dr. Rick actually. Or for me, what I would do is I I would actually eat at the raw gourmet restaurant, right? With some caveats. So, I mean, as you guys know that have watched me, I do a lot of, I probably do the most raw gourmet restaurant reviews online on YouTube than anybody else. I have so many different episodes comparing and talking about some of the different raw food restaurants. And even in some of the videos, you could see my energy level go from here when I start the video to like, uh, down to there once I start eating some of the food. And even in the, in the middle of making the video, I can remember one video where my energy level was just tanked. <laughs> so, you know, I've learned to, be creative and like Dr. Rick said, you know, it depends on what you eat at that raw food restaurant. So I try to choose the things 
that don't have you know extracted oils that are using nuts and seeds and avocados for the source of fats and have lower salt content and i do like some spices because i think they can be beneficial depending on what they are and in what quantities but i i will say that you know i would choose a raw gourmet restaurant but knowing that when i go to a raw food gourmet restaurant i feel a difference compared to like eating homegrown stuff out of my home and i make my own recipe you know when i'm traveling that's when i generally go out to raw food restaurants when i'm not at home and have the accessibility of you know the foods in my garden but i, I do like going out because it kind of makes things fun a little bit and you know get some new flavor sensations but i may not I, I generally don't feel the best the next day and of course also my girlfriend she loves going out to raw food places and I don't think she's as affected as, as I am at this point in time. So, yeah. So, yeah. Well, again, if the raw gourmet restaurant had some things that were clean enough to eat, that would clearly be preferable yeah. over eating cooked food. I mean, I, I don't eat a lot of cooked food. I feel my best when I'm raw. But when you, again, clean, simple cooked food versus raw gourmet, experience has, has taught me a, a tough lesson. Yeah, and I want to encourage all, if you're a raw food restaurant owner watching this, right, I want to encourage you guys to have some simple recipes, like one of the last raw food cafes I went to, all their dressings were oil-based, and like, hey, can you blend me up some, like, a handful of nuts with some tomatoes blended up or something, and, and they, they wouldn't even do that for me, you know, and they just, no, we just got these oil-based dressings, and I don't want an oil-based dressing, like. Now, if, if I'm traveling and out of town, which is really about the only time this would come up. Right, and that's when know, I eat out. My choice would be the, the, the cooked salad bar place. But if, let's say, I'm at home, I might actually choose the raw gourmet place, and here's why. Because I would preload before yeah. I go. I'd eat a big salad at home. I'd eat before I go out to eat. And then I would just, uh, I'd already be full, so I'd eat a little bit of the gourmet stuff. And that might actually work. Right, and that's but, actually another tip that I tried to give you guys in a lot of my videos, actually, that I learned from Dr. Rick. Uh, he calls it preload. preload I call it pre-party. Because <laughs> you're partying before your raw food party at the restaurant. And I try to, like, always maybe even bring into the restaurant a couple heads of romaine or some celery or something to eat with, along with the uh, dense food to kind of, like, uh, neutralize some of it. Yeah. And make it less dense or eat, you know, before you go in. So then actually you're going to buy less food and save more money in, in the get-go and still have the fun experience of going out with your girlfriend and, and having some fun, uh, what I call party foods. Gourmet foods are party foods. And I, I think it's quite unfortunate that some, you know, uh, uh, places, culinary institutes, for example, just teach all the gourmet stuff and they don't teach any good sustainable, healthy recipes that you should eat in the long term. So if you're looking for some good, healthy, sustainable raw food recipes you should eat in the long term, be sure to check my YouTube channel. I do have videos on this YouTube channel dedicated to sharing some of the recipes actually I eat in my home. And unfortunately, a lot of YouTube videos, in my opinion, show a lot of gourmet raw food dishes, which in my opinion, you know, are, are definitely not the healthiest. Yeah, good, better, best. So they're good. But there's a long way to go for better <laughs> and then best. Long, long way. And then that's actually good news. If you feel better eating gourmet raw food compared to your previous diet... Don't let us dissuade you. That's yeah. great. But just let us encourage you to know that there's so much further yeah. Yeah. to go. However much better you feel, there's about five or six levels <laughs> still to go. So we would encourage you all to, to keep going. So now we have the next question for you, Dr. Rick. It might be a tricky one, but we'll see. And we might answer this one also differently, and that's cool. Um, but uh, so, for example, uh, in this day, you've eaten most of your calories for your day in raw, right? And you've had maybe, I don't know, 10% or so from calories from fats, so, but you're hungry still. So maybe just like after dinner, you want to eat something a little bit else. So would you eat some avocados or soaked nuts and seeds, or would you have some cooked potatoes or rice to get some calories that you may need to totally fill you up? Got it. So now it's kind of like the gourmet question, but we've taken the salt and some of the nastiest stuff out. So we're talking about, do I eat more fat and stay raw? Right. Or do I eat more cooked and stay or low starch, fat? Yeah. That's a tough one. If the, if the question were steamed, non-starchy vegetables, like lighter vegetables, I'd probably go cooked. Mm. If it's denser things like potatoes and brown rice, and, and we were talking about this earlier, it's uh, it, like I, I would go above 10% fat, which I do most days anyway, for a lot of reasons, 
And if you think you know it all because you heard one guru, you don't. <laughs> every decade and every year, you learn a lot more. Anyway, not to get on about that. But so if I eat 20% fat, like have some avocado or whatnot, um, and stay all raw, I tend to feel a lot better. And this is based on many years of personal experience, as well as a lot of education, than if I were to stay lower fat and eat cooked. Mm. Now, at some point, like going to, I don't know where exactly it is, but at some point, well before I get to gourmet raw food, where 50, 60, 70 percent of the calories are coming from fat, mm. and we're adding other unhealthy elements to that, I would much rather be cooked, just the way I, I answered the last question. And it might be at 30 or so percent of the calories from fat. So for a little while, I'd rather eat more fat. At some point, the fat just gets too much to take and too hard to digest. And I think steamed vegetables are way, way, way healthier. Mm. Yeah, so I mean, the way this question was set up, you know, you've eaten low fat for most of the day. So at that point, I would straight up just eat the avocados or the soaked nuts. Like for me, always. Like I wouldn't want to even eat the cooked stuff. And the reason for me why is because like I've long time ago, I've had some baked potatoes, right? And I've eaten them. And once I started eating some baked potatoes, I just crave more and want more. And then I probably, I was just like, when I did this, I just ate baked potatoes like every night for several nights in a row and I couldn't stop. And so I'm, mm. I'm, I'm concerned that if I did that, because I'll maybe be like, my personality is like all or nothing. If I did do, do that and start eating cooked stuff, I might just keep eating that. And then I'd maybe not eat as much raw. Even, but what I learned was when I did that, my energy level was tanked. I need more sleep when I started eating the baked stuff. And like, it just took something away from me, like my high vibrancy and high energy levels. And I didn't like that being taken away. So to this day, you know, I'd rather eat a little bit more fat. And for me, the avocados would digest significantly better than any kind of nuts or seeds, even if they are soaked, just because more if it's a more water rich fat. Clear. In addition to, you know, I'd rather have like some kind of coconut blended young coconut or even a hey, coconut that milk. A question. I know, but you, <laughs> you made up things in your question too. So, but that's what I would, that's what I would personally do, you know, but then even then, these are all hypothetical questions. What should you do if you have this option or this option? We're kind of like adding some different options, but the, the, the real answer is you have other options besides just eating fat or cooked stuff, you know, I mean, have some more vegetables if you're not full enough, or maybe have some fruits, right? We'll, and we'll get on to some of those questions talking about that more in yeah, a second. Yeah, some of those coming up. Actually, here's a good question for you, Dr. Rick. And let me tell you, I'll, I'll, pre I'll preface this by saying Dr. Rick doesn't really like like bitter greens, so he, he rarely eats dandelion greens. So that's, this is a question for him. My wife loves them. We buy them all the time. <laughs> and, and I love the I'm bitter greens. I'm not such a fan. Like, I totally love them. So anyways, would you, ra would you rather have a raw dandelion juice? It's 75% dandelion greens juiced with 25% pineapple juice, and even though you got some good pineapple juice in there, let me tell you, the dandelion greens are so strong, it's still gonna taste like potent. N nasty, yeah. <laughs> or would you rather have some steamed vegetables? All right, well, when John asked me this before, I had to think about it, and it, it a lot of it would depend upon what I were gonna be doing for the next several hours. So if I were just relaxing home, watching the TV, and it was, you know, I didn't have to be alert or on or anything, I would eat the steamed vegetables. And the reason is, I would enjoy them. Dandelion, <laughs> don't enjoy it so much. I don't remember T.C. Fry saying, if you can't relish it in its raw, natural state, you probably shouldn't be eating it. So anything that makes me think, okay, here it comes. You know, I'm, 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 I'm in defense mode. Uh, and, and at some level, energetically, that's not so good for me. Now, if I were about to go give a presentation to 200 people, and I wanted to inspire them to be raw, and I wanted to be really on the ball the most, the, the light steamed vegetables might bring my brain from an A plus to an A minus. That's not so bad, you know, it brings me down a little, whereas if I just ate a salad, I'd still be at an A+. So if that were the case, I really had to get the most out of myself, I would have the dandelion greens, even though I would not enjoy the taste, half an hour, an hour later, they, they wouldn't be doing anything to bring me down. 
and I, I would be functioning optimally. So I'd sacrifice taste for function there. But usually you want to have things that taste good and make you feel good. So hope so that that would be my choice. I would always choose the dandelion juice with the pineapple. And you know, I I've tried a lot of I tried a lot of greens juice with pineapple and most of them chard, kale, spinach, you know, when I harvested them in my garden and juice them with pineapple it tasted great, but the dandelion and uh, pineapple still didn't taste good, but even knowing that, I'd rather have that juice than uh, some cooked steamed vegetables for me personally. All right, how about this, John? You have to eat this way for a week. Yeah, no problem. I do the I do the juice, man. More dandelions in in me as much as it doesn't maybe taste so good. I know there are health benefits to dandelion, like it's a blood purifier and all kinds of different things. And you know, I really want to encourage people to eat a diversity of foods and not even if you don't like a food so much, you know. Don't eat it all the time, but still eat it, you know, on rare occasions. So at least you're getting some of the nutrients in that specific food. What if you're maxed out, you're at the lowest body fat point healthy, and for the next week you can either have dandelion pineapple juice or steamed vegetables. I'm going to have dandelion pineapple juice until and I... get underweight. And get underweight, and but get then depleted. at the end of that week, then I'm going to eat things to gain more weight. But I've never had a problem maintaining my weight on a raw foods diet. <laughs> lot more discussion we could have. Yeah, I mean, once again, these are, this is this or that, but you know, you guys have options. Don't make the dandelion pineapple juice if you don't like it. Make another juice that tastes good to you. Add some celery, add some other things in, add some, you know, spinach or romaine lettuce. It's much more mild. All right, Dr. Rick, so. Yeah, yeah and if it was almost any other green, I would. I know. I would pick the That's other green. That's why I chose the dandelion, because I know no. you don't like it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to make My it fun. My wife eats the dandelion. <laughs> she, we got that covered. I guess that doesn't help me. It's like hiring someone else to exercise for you. It doesn't really work that way. All right, so the next question, Dr. But by Rick. the way, I get lots of greens. Yeah, he gets lots, lots of greens. Lots of greens, tree collards, lettuce, uh, tons of cauliflower, zucchini. You know, couple, two, three, four pounds of vegetables a day. Excellent. Yeah, very important. Get your vegetables every day. Uh, so, next question for you, Dr. Rick. This is something I know you may have run into before, and I've run into myself. You know, late at night, after you've had your last meal of the night, like, a, you know, I have a nice big salad or a raw soup at night. You know, you eat that, you're pretty stuffed, but you still feel like you want a little bit something. So, would you have some steamed non-starchy vegetables or like a handful of two or almonds so again it's it's cooked versus fat now right uh generally speaking some are good people are going to get mad who are <laughs> adamantly all raw based on personal experience as well as education i would eat the the light vegetables the steamed mm. light vegetables over the almonds First of all, for the same amount of calories, let me think, yeah. we're talking like 200 calories per pound versus 2,800 calories per pound, I could eat 14 <laughs> times the volume yeah. of the steamed vegetables for the same amount of calories as 1 14th the amount of almonds. So I'm going to feel a lot more full and satisfied on the steamed vegetables. I am going to get piles more nutrition, yeah. piles more fiber, um, it, it's just going to be so much better of a deal. Uh, and it's going to take longer to eat, so there's just more there. It's going to be more fun, more satiating, more nutrient-dense. Just no doubt. I, I would sacrifice a bit of not being as raw for being healthier, in my, in, in my experience. Yeah, I mean, i got to kind of agree with Dr. Rick, but I no, personally... We agree with Well, I would agree with you on that, but I would eat the almonds. No. <laughs> You'd eat the denser, less nutritious food so you could be all raw. In this case, yes. But once again, this is the hypothetical situation. Not that I would go and eat almonds after dinner, because I, I rarely, if ever, do that. I'd rather eat some dried fruit or, you know, uh, maybe banana sorbet or have some extra fruit before I even ate the almonds instead or just have maybe more salad because I didn't eat enough of it in the first place. No, but you said you were full I know, of salad. I know, but I still... Anyways, well, I need the this? almonds. We'll agree that we'll, we'll uh, make a banana shake or have some banana <laughs> ice cream after our salad instead of eating something cooked or too much fat. I agree. There we go. So do we, that instead. We, we agreed. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I still think that, I mean, 
Dr. Rick's right. The steamed well, vegetables in that case probably a bit healthier. All right. All right, so here's another one, Dr. Rick. Let's see if we can stump you up and stump me up, actually. So would I rather or would you rather eat lightly steamed homegrown greens from your backyard, you know, grown with rock dust and all, all the best minerals, or a raw commercial kale that's raw, you know, just from the store that may have been sprayed and maybe not grown with the best nutrients and whatnot and picked a week ago and all this? All right, so lightly steamed. Right. You lose a few nutrients, but not a lot. There might even be a few nutrients that you might absorb a little better. In theory, right. this is debate on that back and forth. My wife's the expert on that. She's got like all the research If on you cut the kale first, what? then you'd probably get more nutrients uh, because you're, you're releasing the enzymes so they could uh, go to work. Cut it first. Not sure about that. All right, well. All right, well, uh, I think I would probably go with steaming greens out of the backyard versus raw and commercial. Number one, the commercial means it's probably sprayed with pesticides. And it would depend where it is, if it's a clean 15 or a right. dirty dozen, <laughs> you know, it depend where it is there. But at least I would know what the stuff from the backyard. Nobody sprayed it. So I, I wouldn't be getting that. And the steaming, basically I lose a little bit in nutrient value. Um, and I, I think that's far less uh, damaging than actually consuming pesticides. Yeah, so Dr. Rick, I'd have to agree with you. Not that I would actually do this, but I would rather eat my homegrown greens that I know are grown in nutritious soil, probably at least twice as nutritious as the stuff that you buy in the store. Um, and you probably won't lose half the nutrients from steaming. In fact, right. you won't. And so I have already, I'm starting with a higher quality produce. And then the other thing is that the produce is picked and then shipped. It could be a week old by the time you got it. Not to mention that they're not adding the nutrients in the soil in the first place. Ah. So potentially the greens that I'm growing in lightly steaming has more nutrition than the conventional stuff that you also brought up. The pesticide issue is a huge issue for me because I don't want to start toxifying my body with pesticides and all these things that are needlessly added to our food just so a company can make profit and not have buggles in it. I'd rather, actually, the, some of the stuff I eat today had buggles in it. I just wash it real good and yeah, so there's some buggles. That's a good thing to have, right? It shows it's organic and I didn't spray my food. Not to say that I'd actually do that because I just eat my homegrown stuff raw, but, but nonetheless, this is how important these things can be and another reason why I want to encourage you guys to grow your own food and uh, check out my YouTube channel, GrowingYourGreens.com, to learn how you guys could grow your own because it is so important. You know, and that brings up a good point. In, in, in some ways, I would actually rather eat, and I'll explain why, this may sound shocking initially, some non-vegan food over some vegan food. Whoa. And here's why I say what that. What kind of non-vegan food? Well, here's why. When you talked about not having holes in your produce from the bugs and stuff, Makes me think, oftentimes when I uh, crack open a head of organic cauliflower, I see some aphids in there. Uh, yeah. Whereas with the commercial cauliflower, not that I haven't had any of that in years, but you wouldn't see aphids in there because the bugs don't eat it. So I, I rinse it and all, but sometimes it's, I don't fully rinse it. I eat some aphids. I'm like, oh my <laughs> oh, God, right. I'm not a vegan anymore. <laughs> or I wouldn't, the, the Jane vegetarians would say I'm out, you know, <laughs> I didn't follow the plan. So I would actually rather eat that, even if I got some bugs. Mm -hmm. Then have the pesticides and have it clean. Wow. Clean of bugs. Yeah, know? I mean, I try to wash the things I best I can, but I might not get all of them all the time, but do the best you can, you know? Yep. All right, so here. So, what are, what's our central theme here? It, there, there's very few absolutes. Right, it's there's all depends on the situation. And we want to eat as much raw, as many vegetables as possible, as organic, not spray. As, as much. Uh, locally grown, better yet, you know, with grow growing yourself. your greens, grow it yourself. But there's always exceptions and there's exactly. always things to consider and the world isn't perfect and you do the best you can. So hopefully you're enjoying our, our banter here <laughs> a little bit of the back and forth discussion, wrestling some of these issues. Yeah, and I think the other thing that I really want to get across in this video is that there's not always like one answer. Oh, raw is always better than cooked, right? That's not always right and cooked's not always better than raw. But it depends on the situation and unfortunately in our society we're taught to think in things are either right or wrong it's good or it's bad right mm. but there's a in between that's why i like to teach the good better best philosophy right and always try to do your best and just know that you always have options out there and to 
and to think about things and analyze things and, and figure out what makes more sense to you and, and do what feels right for you, all right? So the next question isn't even about raw versus cooked. It's actually raw versus raw, Dr. Rick, and this may surprise uh, some of you guys on the answer that either of us may take. So it's actually in a mono meal of oranges. So some really delicious oranges that are really sweet, maybe left on a tree for a year like they should be, so they're low acid, really delicious, or would you rather have some, maybe just some average oranges with some lettuce and avocado. So you're having an, a really good orange mono meal like optimal fruit or you know maybe just some standard oranges with lettuce and avocado. That's a tough one. I thought the question was gonna be just the oranges, just the good oranges versus the good oranges with some lettuce. So it's, let me start with that one. I would break from mono meal and add lettuce to my oranges. And the reason for that is because you get more nutrients. Calorie per calorie, lettuce is way more nutrient dense than oranges are. So that would be good. But if it's really great oranges <laughs> versus kind of average oranges and then lettuce. And avocado. Boy, that's tougher. I would go with the really good oranges, mm. mono meal. Mm. I don't know that the lettuce would make up for good orange versus average oranges. You know, I don't know if that would... And the avocado, if, if, though. And then the avocado, man, I don't know. Why would I have avocado with oranges? That sounds It's kind of really, like a more of a salad, man. You can make really like a little weird. salad, like lettuce with orange avocado dressing. People do that. Okay, that's true. And that's because so it's uh, kind of like a salad instead of an orange monomeal of optimal oranges. Yeah, jeez. Oh, I stumped him. This is good. <laughs> yeah, it's Make tough. Make it think hard. I, I don't know. To me, again, I, I just, I don't really, avocado and oranges just doesn't appeal to me. Now, we could analyze the nutrients and all that, <laughs> but just like, doesn't appeal to me. All right. So I think I'd stick with the really good oranges. But better yet, really good oranges with some lettuce would be my first choice. <laughs> So mono meal, all else being equal, I think the simpler your meals, the easier it is to digest, the better. However, adding lettuce to fruit is not going to screw up food combining. It's not <laughs> going to screw up your digestion, at least for the majority of people. It's going to add some fiber and add some nutrients, mm. and, and it's probably going to be a good thing. So yes, more complicated but not too complicated, and on the, hell, on the whole, I think you're gonna come out ahead. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I'd also agree, but anyways, I would choose actually the oranges, lettuce, and avocado, for me personally. And, but as a general rule, but of course there's exceptions, because you know maybe I feel in, in that day that I don't want to eat avocados, and I want just some really good oranges, because they're really good. But in general, I'd rather eat you know more varieties of foods than just one food. Because even though as much as I believe in mono meals, I've eaten so many mono meals over the years. You know, I, I believe that you know by in, once again increasing the varieties, you know, you may it may benefit you more uh, personally. And you know, speaking of just eating oranges, I I did that for a day and a half once mm -hmm. uh, a couple of years ago, and it was because we had a student in class say that. She heard somebody say that all fruit was acidic because glucose is acidic and, you know, the sugar is acidic. And I'm just like, that's wrong. So I made a YouTube video where I ate 36 hours of only oranges. In the latter 24 hours, I collected all my urine, analyzed the pH, and it was 7. It was neutral. <laughs> only, and I picked an acid fruit. Not only just fruit, but oranges and acid fruit and my pH was neutral. Mm. But then I did an interesting experiment. I said, okay, what, what if I, I did a whole nutrient analysis of eating only oranges, oh. and then I took a few oranges away and replaced those calories with vegetables, mm. and the nutrient profile improved dramatically. It was really dramatic. Like some key nutrients that were totally lacking oranges were, were there now with the vegetables. And then I took a few more oranges away and added a few nuts and seeds. Mm. And that really completed the nutrient profile. It was, it was really pretty dramatic. So, you know, uh, 
you got to weigh a lot of things out there. So the good oranges and the lettuce, then that that would be my uh, but then you said ultimate but choice. With the nuts, it added even more nutrition. That's why I like and so instead of nuts, eat avocado. So that would be. But similar. the avocado doesn't do it. So there oh, was some sesame seeds for some calcium and and some mm, other things, it. and the avocado didn't. Uh, I got it. Didn't have that same nutrient profile. So that being said, I want. All you guys, especially if you guys are eating high volumes of oranges, unfortunately most oranges are not like the ones I described as the optimal oranges that have been sitting on the tree for a year and have low acid. They have high acid content and you know, you may be able to basically, uh, they may be not acidifying to your body, but they're definitely acid on your teeth that can erode your enamel and have, and, and you'll pay big consequences later. You and know, like we and, and probably have, both have had that I'm aware of, yeah, you know, with fact, our teeth. In fact, what came up for that is I was at a calorie deficit and eating all those oranges because they hurt my, where my gums met my yeah. teeth. Now, if I had had a full day's worth of calories from the oranges, I'm pretty certain that my urine pH would have been slightly alkaline. Mm. To give extreme example, I spent four years at a water fasting center. When people are water fasting, their urine's always acidic because we produce acidic waste products, part of our muscle metabolism and all, and then we bring in alkalizing foods to buffer that. When you're on a water fast, you're not bringing in those alkalizing foods, so your urine pH is, is low, is acidic. So I got to neutral by under-eating on oranges. Mm. If I had eaten more of them, it's pretty safe to say it would have been alkaline, but it was acidic to my teeth and gums, but alkaline in the body, depending on the, the mineral content left over. All right, so, so, so the thing I wanted to share is, you know, after eating any kind of citrus fruit or even pineapple that's quite acidic, because most of them are being sold un, 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 untruly ripe, um, you know, you want to minimally rinse out your, your mouth with some water, maybe some water and baking soda, but do not brush your teeth at least for a half hour, maybe an hour or later to get, that, get all that acid off. Very important. All right, Dr. Rick, so the next uh, uh, question, is uh, after your dinner salad at night, you're almost full, but you're still a bit hungry, and you've eaten about 20% of your calories from fats. Another one of those, we need a little more food, what's it gonna be? Yeah, should it be a handful of raw nuts, or a, just some whole fruit watermelon, fresh watermelon? What would you rather do? All right, so you're asking me, do I go higher in fat? Or do I break the food combining rules and have a melon? Yeah. Because they say melons, eat them alone or leave them alone. Right. And if you don't leave them alone, oh my God, life's over, right? <laughs> you, you can't, um, that's a tough one. And if I've had a big enough salad and there's a few nuts and seeds, that's, that's reasonable. You know, that's not so bad, but if, I, if I've already had, let's say there was a good amount of fat in the salad already and it was already kind of dense, would I add even more fat and feel even denser? Or would I have watermelon? And we picked watermelon for this question because it clearly breaks food combining rules. But you've only had 20% of your calories from fat to already. thus far. So, oh, oh, I see. So do I go over 20% or right. do I... Well, I'm going to say this, because usually during the day I eat uh, fruit and some greens, and that's, you know, 8 9% of the calories from fat, maybe if there's enough greens in there. So if I got to 20% for the whole day, that probably means my salad meal might have had 30 or 40% of the calories mm. from fat. So I'm probably already feeling a little bit dense. So given that, I would actually break the food combining rules and have some watermelon instead of eating more fat. Wow. I don't think that's going to, I mean, you know what, I've, I've broken the, uh, the, the melon rules all the time, eating melons <laughs> with grapes, eating them with oranges, you know. I, I wouldn't go as far as like bananas and other sweet fruit with melon, that, that seems a little extreme. But if the salad's going to move through pretty well and not hold up the melon for too long, I doubt the melon's going to ferment uh, terribly. So I'd probably break food combining and stay lighter uh, as opposed to eating those super calorie-dense, tough-to-digest mm. nuts and seeds. If I've already eaten a lot of them. If I, it was just a big salad, and if you know you add the nuts and seeds then... Like instead of on top of other nuts and seeds, you know, the first level, I'd probably go with a few nuts and seeds. 
All right. At some point, the fat just gets too high, you feel too dense, and you're better off with fruit. In my, yeah. my experience, right. my personal experience. So based on how the question was set up, with 20% of my calories coming from fat thus far, I, I, I usually don't like to exceed 25 or 30% fat total. So a handful of nuts probably is not going to throw me over 30%, so I probably would just go for the nuts instead of eating melon after my big salad meal that already contained fat because I don't, I don't think that would digest so well for me uh, personally. And, you know, if I was at 30% calories from fat, then I would probably choose fruit mm. but not watermelon. Maybe some oranges or something. Well, that dinner. wasn't a choice. I know, but I'm, I'm hypothetically. I would agree. <laughs> or if it were bananas instead right. of the water, it would be real easy. I'd have bananas instead of mm. almonds. So, yeah, always the choices are not so clear, so you got to kind of think about it. And also see how it's going to affect you. Like, watermelon may not affect Rick as bad as me after, you know, a big heavy meal. And it may be different for you as well. Well, if it was a real heavy, dense meal, I would not eat watermelon. If you asked me, I just ate a bunch of steamed vegetables, or I just ate some gourmet raw food, no way would I have a watermelon then. <laughs> I mean, that would not work. I'm, you know, the type of salad I eat is a pile of lettuce pile of cauliflower, a pile of zucchini, and maybe there's some nuts and seeds or avocado in the dressing. So it's not too dense. Yeah. That's going to go through pretty quickly. Yeah. And, and the watermelon, yes, will sit on top of it, but it's not going to hang out for that long. If I went to some gourmet raw restaurant, that raw meal is going to be sitting in my stomach <laughs> for hours. And the watermelon sitting on, on top. top for hours, that would be a problem. Mm. All so, right. again, it, it depends. on A lot of these answers are, it depends yeah. on the circumstances. It's not so black and white. So hopefully this has given you some ideas of how we would react and we both would do things sometimes a bit differently. Yeah. And does that mean one of us was right and the other was wrong? No, we just John have different ways wrong. of thinking the way these things, you know? It's cool. Absolutely. And, 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 the and thing it, is, either way works for either of us. How Rick does it works for him. How I do it works for me. And we're right, it. and if we do, th if if different things work, it you know we're we're both doing what's right, even though it's different from each <laughs> yeah, other. Yeah. We're both doing what's right for us. Awesome. All right. And neither of us are eating processed food. Exactly. I mean, we're we're we're, we're really fine tuning. Or even and we're not eating animal foods. Absolutely huge. So huge. so it's it's a matter of fine tuning here, not like this, these big huge things that the world's going to come to an end over. And if you are eating animal foods or processed foods. Either of the options that we're giving you in this uh, oh. whole questionnaire are no-brainers because they're any way better than either of those two options that you guys are, are doing if you are doing that. Yeah, we're if going you're... between A plus and A minus right. or maybe, well, no, we have some non-ideal <laughs> yeah. things. So we're going between like maybe solid A and, and B plus, <laughs> whereas right. most people are failing miserably. So. <laughs> All, right. <laughs> All right, Dr. Rick, so the next question for you is after dinner... You know, you're pretty full, but you're still a bit hungry, so would you choose... <laughs> Another one of these. <laughs> it happens a lot, right? I know some of you it's guys, true. it happens to me sometimes, too, when I don't eat enough, or I just, I feel like I want something else, so what do you do, right? You're full of salad, but you still need something a little more dense Yeah, because maybe you didn't eat enough fruit a day or something. Or... Yeah, whatever. Anyway, so after dinner, you could choose to maybe fill up a little bit more steamed Brussels sprouts or some dried figs, like sun-dried figs. All right, so Organic. first of all, either of those would work well. Okay, so it's hard to go wrong here. <sighs> I mean, I could go either way, but I guess thinking about it, um, I don't know, it's a tough one. <laughs> On the Not one for hand, me. The figs are going to be a bit easier to digest. I mean, they are awfully concentrated, but they're going to be easier to digest. On the other hand, for the same amount of calories, yeah. I could eat eight times more of the <laughs> steamed vegetables, or maybe up to 15 times more. Um, and that might actually have me eat fewer calories mm. of the steamed vegetables. And are they so hard to digest? Not really. And I'm actually probably going to get a lot more nutrients out of the steamed vegetables than I am out of the figs. Well, it depends what nutrients. Because the figs are, because they're dry, they're so concentrated, the nutrients are higher than a fresh fig. Yeah, but so are the calories. Yeah, yeah, So the, they go up together yeah. when you well, concentrate. So nutrient things. density would be, the Brussels sprouts would be more nutrient dense. Way more nutrient dense. Yeah. So, 
What did you choose? The the other the other thing is I could grab the figs and just eat them much more easily. You know, with, let's say it was Brussels sprouts. I got to cut them in half, and you got to <laughs> steam them. them. You got to <laughs> wait. <laughs> so by then you go to bed, and then that's too. the best thing without eating anything else. Yeah, <laughs> have them for breakfast. Although that'd be weird, steamed vegetables for breakfast. Um, I I could go either way on that. You got to choose one. <laughs> All right. Uh, if my goal is optimizing my calorie and nutrient intake, I would go with the steamed vegetables over the dried fruit. All right. So I'm now I'm 95 or 90 percent raw that day instead of 100. But in my opinion, I came out ahead compared to my all raw choice. Mm. I mean, that's respectable. Me, on the other hand, I'd choose the dried figs. Uh, number one, I'd enjoy them so much more than some steamed Brussels sprouts. I love Brussels sprouts. <laughs> They're awesome. And I would stay all raw. <laughs> or mostly all raw. All right. All right, Dr. Rick. So uh, here's another one. Okay, this is an interesting one. So if you had, okay, steamed broccoli that you finally chewed, so you chewed up into a mush like baby food, or... You had raw broccoli chewed five times, but not fully masticated, so you're swallowing like little bits of broccoli. Uh, what would you rather do? That was a no-brainer. Why? No matter what the choices were between raw and steamed broccoli, I would have steamed broccoli. Oh, I see. I thoroughly enjoy steamed broccoli. It's really nutritious. And uh, raw broccoli just doesn't... Mo mo some types of like young raw broccoli can be really, really good. A typical head of raw broccoli is kind of chalky and tough to chew, and it doesn't always digest so well. Um, and, and I know I, I could, let's just say hypothetically, you lose 20% of your nutrients steaming broccoli versus having it raw. If I could eat twice as much steamed broccoli as raw broccoli, which I could probably eat four or five times more steamed broccoli than raw broccoli, I'm going to come out way ahead nutrient-wise. Mm. So All those right. are my thoughts. But I'm, I'm not against raw broccoli, and especially like those little young ones sometimes. They're, they're pretty good raw. They're not all chalky like that. Um, but as far as the mushing versus chewing, I mean, chewing well is important. As John knows, he'll tell you, every time my wife and I and John sit down to a meal, Karen finishes first. I'm in the middle, and then an hour later, John <laughs> finishes his salad because he, he really chews really well. But it makes a difference. More surface area, your stomach doesn't have teeth. And yeah, your either microbes, like everything, fine. So yeah, so my answer, even though I'm a raw foodist, I would actually choose the finely chewed steamed broccoli just because it's broken down properly. Wow. You know, I, I, it really bothers me when I'm sitting across from people that are just like taking two chews and swallowing, and they're swallowing big particulate. It kind of like upsets my chi of, of eating slowly, <laughs> actually. So it really is sometimes difficult at potlucks and things like that. But um, not that I would actually eat uh, steamed, finely chewed broccoli. I would rather like chew my broccoli properly, uh, raw broccoli. And of course, like Dr. Rick said, you know, I like to harvest broccoli out of my garden. And uh, when I harvest it, I harvest the young tender, uh, you know, shoots and florets that are coming up. So I'm not getting that stuff at the store that's kind of like nasty, in my opinion. And the other thing I eat besides just the little broccoli flowers from my garden is I eat all the broccoli leaves, which most people don't have the advantage mm. of, of having to get because the broccoli leaves has the same nutrients or even more nutrients than just the broccoli flower itself that tends to have a lot more water And content. those are great. And they're good I, too. I yeah. might stick with, if it was just raw versus cooked of, of the leaves, I'd go with raw. Because mm. they're tender, you can put them in a salad. I mean, they're really good. Yeah. They're really good steam, too. It's hard to go wrong. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, the main thing to remember is, I, I said steam one, because chewing your food and chewing into mush, super critical, super important for to get the optimal digestion uh, for your body. All right, Dr. Rick. Oh, man, I think we're down to the last question. And this one's not a cooked one. No, this Can is I a Can I just say one. at this point, yeah. even though I've been choosing a lot of cooked food over raw food... <laughs> You should all know I eat at least 90% yeah. of my calories from raw food and have been doing so for about 30 years now. Mm. So, but you know, when given tough choices, there are times when I think cooked food is superior. And but that don't, don't want to make you think I'm eating all this cooked food. Every, every choice, I'm <laughs> predominantly raw. 
And uh, I want to say that, you know, since I've been doing this since 1995, I've been about 99.9% .9 raw. So I don't steam things. I mean, I did, I cooked some stuff way like 20 years ago when I had some a big breakup and whatnot. But on a regular basis, I don't eat uh, anything that I cook myself. I make a few exceptions. I may have a video on this upcoming in the future. I have some, uh, um, some uh, blanched frozen vegetables. So I might have some blanched corn or frozen peas that mm -hmm. have been blanched before they freeze it. Uh, frozen fruits are not blanched before freezing, so they are really raw, but the, I have some uh, blanched vegetables just to increase the diversity in my diet, so I don't normally eat a lot of corn, and this is organic corn or organic peas, and also I like to get some of the frozen peas to get some like, uh, you know, uh, legumes in my diet, which I think are also important, many raw foods may miss out on. Another thing that I have cooked sometimes are uh, maybe some dried fruits and nuts and spices, which may be heated hotter than to the temperature I would like. And another one that's really big these days, I'm doing a mushroom powder blend that's actually heat processed because mushrooms actually, most of them should not be eaten raw due to some of the toxins in the mushrooms and to break down some of the chitin material. And so, I do that for health purposes because uh, there's some really good properties in some, uh, some mushrooms. Wow, so your 0.1% cooked is, is well utilized. Yeah, so I'm not like just so. wasting it on like steamed broccoli when I could eat the raw broccoli and chew it well in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> so I have things that I wouldn't maybe normally eat uh, that, that may increase my diet and maybe give me additional benefits that I'm looking for. All right, Dr. Rick, so last question. It's a raw versus a raw question. Would you rather eat oranges, bananas, and mangoes fresh or blend oranges, bananas, mangoes and three homegrown collard leaves so now the question is like raw fruit versus blended fruit plus greens so is the blending and the greens make up for the, the, for the fruit or something i would go bl with blending <laughs> because uh you know the the first meal sounds really good i would enjoy it there i'd enjoy both of them but i in my opinion the I mean, three big collard, I mean, those are, you know, John knows how big they are. He encouraged us to grow them in our ear. I mean, they're huge. I mean, like three of those leaves, that's a lot of greens. If you chopped all those up, it would be like 10 or 12 cups of greens. I mean, that's a lot. In my opinion, that quantity, nutrition-wise, that quantity of greens far, far outweighs <laughs> the little bit of nutrient loss you might get from blending. There's been a lot of talk about that in recent years and a lot of claims that just can't be backed up. Okay, there are very few studies looking at how much nutrients you lose from blending, even though they claim there's a lot out there. So you probably lose a little bit of, of nutrients from the oxidation from the blade spinning really fast. On the other hand, you break up the cell walls, you know, more of the stuff might be available at the same time. So there's a little bit of a debate there. But yeah, all those greens, I think, would well far outweigh whatever damage blending might cause. Mm. Yeah, no, I, I respect Dr. Rick's opinion on that. And uh, for me personally, I would want to eat the, the fresh oranges, bananas, and mangoes, and I would not want to blend. You know, knowing what I know about blenders and seeing the new vacuum blenders and seeing some of the testing that they've done with vacuum blending versus non-vacuum blending, um, you know, and we're, we talked about non-vacuum blending here. Uh, you know, for example, some of the, one of the, the data I've seen on blending blueberries, you lose about two and a half times the amount of uh, polyphenol antioxidants when blending blueberries versus just, um, you know, blending them under a vacuum. And of course, we could kind of surmise that if you didn't blend them and just ate them, you'd get two and a half times more of the phyto, uh, uh, polyphenol antioxidants you know, without blending them. So you're losing like significant portions of the antioxidants with blending. And so I don't, well, I personally one, don't one think that- One category of antioxidants. One category that they the tested. Whole thing. But what other things are you losing that they have not yet tested? So I don't think that the three collard greens, as good as collard greens are, and as much as they're adding, because they're also adding other phytonutrients that you won't be getting if you're just eating bananas, oranges, and mangoes without the collard greens. I don't think that makes up for the, the blending aspect. And plus also the aeration and the gas and bloating that you may get from the blending and the oxidation and all the bubbles and oxygen added. So I would rather just eat the fruit whole. That being said, um, you know, I'd rather uh, when you blend, blend it in, this, a, in a... You get, you get air? No, I'm gonna, I, I, I haven't done a video yet, but man, Dr. Rick, I could, I could blend the same thing it's gonna start out with this much quantity in the blender craft, and then when I'm done blending, it's this high. 
how did I create more volume in the blender okay, so from just blending some air space Clearly there's in. air there's in some oxidation. dissolved inside and then if you just let that sit, it's going to then bubble out and then it's going to lower back down. It's too bad. It would be great to see someone do an overall nutrient analysis. I agree. Because when you pick I a agree. specific I thing, agree completely. then it's tough. And especially the people who are doing that, you know, are touting the vacuum blenders. I agree. They're so trying they to might have product. tested 20 different nutrients. I and, agree. Oh, look at They're this. cherry picking. We found one here. And so we don't know. We don't know if that's indicative of all the nutrients or if it's just the, the one that looked dramatic for them. Well, they did. They've done other. There was like they did two nutrients in the testing I've seen, and I mean these these blenders are not yet out yet. But nonetheless, I mean, the option is if you chewed up these really finely. I think Dr. Rick and I would both agree these ingredients like uh, mangoes, homegrown collard leaves, uh, you know, bananas and oranges, eaten whole, chewed up finely, or the three without the collard greens. I think we'd both agree that the collard greens chewed finely without the blending would be a better thing to do, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah, especially in the spring. Yeah, the collard greens tender. are like soft and tender and they're like, they almost taste like they're steamed when they're raw. Yeah, they're so now, good. Now in the fall and the winter when they're more purpley and kind of hard, uh, it's a little tougher to chew them, but they're still pretty good yeah, like that. Yeah, they're still good. But anyways, yeah, so Dr. Rick would maybe like the convenience of blending and he feels that it doesn't lose as much as, as I like to do. And I mean, of course... We would also both agree that juicing, slow juicing these ingredients would be better than blending, would we? The greens, yeah. Well, and, and the fruit. The fruit with the greens juiced. Boy, that'd be weird. Versus the blending. It'd be weird to juice a banana. Yeah, I've never I know. done that. It wouldn't really work. You would get some <laughs> banana essence, but most of the pulp would just come out, so you wouldn't get a lot yeah, of Yeah, there's not in. enough water yeah. content in there. Uh, but anyways. But again, fine-tuning here. Yeah, fine-tuning. It, it, it's hard to go wrong. Right. I mean, these are all extreme examples just to kind of prove a point for you guys, and we hope you guys learned a little bit from this. And if you guys like this format, actually, uh, Dr. Rick and his wife, Dr. Karen, is soon going to be putting on a summit where they're gonna, he's going to ask like 20, over 20 different um, people into raw foods for a long time, a lot of these kind of questions, so that you guys can kind of hear more about different ideas from many different uh, raw food uh, teachers out there. So, Rick, do you want to explain more about yeah, this? Yeah, that's right. So, it's called the International Raw Food Summit 2017, because it's 2017 <laughs> here. And uh, the, the byline is, is raw food in the real world. Hmm. So, we, we ask, uh, you know, again, 20 leading experts in the raw food community a whole series of trade-off questions. And we ask them why they would choose this versus the other thing, so we get an idea of what their priorities are, mm. what's most important to them and why. And some of the questions don't have to do with food. They have to do with eating ideally versus not quite ideally versus uh, optimal amount of sleep versus a couple hours less sleep. Or, uh, you know, exercise versus eating some cooked food versus being all raw but being sedentary. Mm. What would they choose and wow, why? Interesting. And uh, some of the answers may surprise you. I mean, we have some people on here who eat 100% raw, or at least 99% raw, who have actually said they would eat cooked food and exercise over being sedentary and raw. So it tells you Pretty how important wow. exercise is or how important sleep is. Yeah. And, and the bottom line for all of them is we're all, we're all so far ahead of people who aren't bothering <laughs> to do this or who have said, oh my God, one person did, says this and the other person says this and I'm confused and I don't know what to do. Raw food seems so complicated. I'm going back to the way I mm. used to eat or I'm paleo now because it seems simpler. And then you don't get the benefits of a raw food diet. So even a poorly implemented raw food diet is probably better than what most people are doing most of the time. So anyway, it, it's a great summit and it just breaks down the hurdles so people can know that, uh, you know, they're on the right path. And we're, we're looking for, even though different people have different opinions, we're looking for the points of agreement mm -hmm. so you can have confidence in what you're doing instead of being so confused all the time and always feel like you're doing something wrong. Because no matter what you're doing, there's going to be someone out there to tell you it's wrong. Mm. 
Like being well, vegan, it's wrong. <laughs> you can't get yeah. enough protein. I mean, all <laughs> these silly things out there. So instead of pitting people against each other or just like saying, oh, you tell me you think, you're, and then the other person tells me their thing, we're, we're actually kind of taking control and etching out what, what's critical and, and finding points of agreement. So if that appeals to you, check out John's link below. Yep, and I'll put you it up can, down below. Uh, you can join us for the International Raw Food Summit 2017. And the amazing thing is it's free. So sign up now, get notified in every episode that comes on. As it comes on, you get notified and listen to it for free to get all the information, you know, without any cost to you. Yeah. If you sign up now, though, you got to sign up now. Yeah, and we're not going to, like, pack it all into four days so you have to buy the thing. You can purchase the summit if you want. However... You can, you can listen to it, and there's going to be roughly one lecture per day. So it's not too much to listen to. You, you can check out the whole thing totally for free. Awesome. And the other thing I want to mention is, you know, if, if you don't get to s listen to the whole thing for free, that's all right. Sign up anyways. And the day that you want to listen the most, in my opinion, is the last day when Dr. Karen and Dr. Rick sum up everything that everybody said, because then you'll really learn the answer if that's what you want. Because I know a lot of people just want, what is the Cut answer? The chase. <laughs> you know, and so they do an excellent job of summing up basically what everybody says and to make it easily and digestible for you so that you guys could actually implement it in your life and get the changes that you guys want to see from a raw foods diet. And it can be so beneficial if done in a proper and, uh, you know, uh, best way possible. Or if you've got 45 minutes to an hour each day, yeah. you can listen to each of the segments and get more inspiration. Yeah, and I think just hearing different people's opinions and hearing for yourself the commonalities that everybody does. You know, I mean, I, I was interviewed and I'm going to have my own answers that some of you guys may be interested in. And they're probably going to be different than other people's. And they're just based on what's right for me and what's worked for me. And what works for other people may be a little bit different based on their, you know, experience, their bodies and, and their, the knowledge that they have. I'm going to do a little giveaway because we've already done center some of the interviews and and one of the uh, one of the leaders who was earning his keep as as a wise leader, kind of joking but totally serious. He said, "You know what? There is one right way to do it." Really? And he did. And you know what he said that right way was? What? It was his way. No, <laughs> it was the way that works for you. Mm, and I thought, ha ha. Very good. So um, it, it's again, we're breaking down those hurdles to give you confidence in what you're doing. Yeah, I mean, I know there's a lot of different raw food channels and YouTube channels, and I would caution you against a lot of the information given on many of those channels because unfortunately, most of the people on the channels haven't been doing raw foods a long time, like 30 years, like Dr. Rick, or even 22 years, like me. I mean, most people have doing it, been doing it for far less, and they may not be spreading the most accurate information, unfortunately. So you definitely want to sign up that link. Once again, I'll put it down below. We'll pop it up right here on the screen. Um, you know, click that link. It'll be in the description. Also, the first comment that I'll pin to the top. Click on that right now and uh, get, to get notified of Dr. Rick's and Dr. Karen's uh, new summit they're doing. Uh, 2017. We'll see you there. Thanks for tuning in. So Dr. Rick, are there any last words that you'd like to share with my viewers today before we go? No, I think that covers it. We, we'd love to see you on the summit and we hope you will take advantage of the opportunity. All right. Yeah, definitely agree. So once again, sign up down below. Super important. If you don't do anything else, listen to any other programs this year, I would highly encourage them. I mean, a lot of the things that I know, I've learned from actually Dr. Rick. He's been one of, he, I mean, <laughs> I've learned a lot of things from this guy since I've met him so many years ago. I mean, he makes a lot of sense and I follow a lot of things he does. And of course, then I've kind of branched out and do my own things as well. But, you know, he forms a solid base of my success for raw food. So I want to thank you for that, Dr. Rick. <laughs> Happy to be of assistance and want to help everybody. So uh, in any case, if you guys enjoyed this format, you know, just questions with Dr. Rick and going over, is it, is it, is this better than this? kind of format because I've never done this before. Hey, please give a thumbs up. If I get a lot of thumbs up, I'll be sure to and uh, come back to Dr. Rick's and Dr. Karen's again and uh, interview them again with more of these kind of questions because I think it's kind of fun and uh, to know but nobody that, that I know of online have ever done anything like this. And uh, also be sure to click that subscribe button right down below to be notified of my new and upcoming episodes I have coming out about every five to seven days on this YouTube channel. You never know where I'll show up or what you'll be learning on my YouTube channel that can improve and better your life. Also, be sure to check my past episodes. My past episodes are a wealth of knowledge. Over 450 videos on this YouTube channel dedicated to teach you guys the best way to eat a plant-based, fruit and vegetable dominated diet. And once again, I wanna encourage you guys, click that link below, sign up to get notified of uh, Dr. Rick's Summit, one of the most important things you can do this year, in my opinion. 
So uh, with that, my name is John Kohler with OKRod.com. We'll see you next time. And until then, remember, keep eating your fresh fruits and vegetables. They're always the best.